Hi guys, Tony here. Today I'm talking about the drug Mildronate, which is the brand name for the pharmaceutical drug, which is Meldonium. I previously did it around six months ago. And when I did it then, I had some drastic changes in my resting heart rate and heart rate variability. This time, because I, I'm technically I'm in a fitter state of health now, instead of doing a, a thousand milligrams a day, I did 500 milligrams. But before I jump into my review of it, I'm just gonna explain about the drug again. I'll just go over it very quickly. So just a recap on a previous video with a little bit more information. She might have heard of Meldonium because of Maria Sharapova. She did it back in 2016 and got banned for doping. You took Meldonium legally for 10 years to deal with your health problems. I wonder just now that it's banned and you can no longer take it. Is it a struggle physically to deal with the, the demands of a Grand Slam fortnight? Is there another question? And she was claiming this was for medical uses, but clearly it wasn't. And um, yeah, being an elite athlete, the benefit she would have got for it, yeah, a physical benefit in her performance, but actually in health terms, not so much, because when you've got great oxygen carrying capacity already, then doing something like this, it might push you into super physiological amounts, but that's not necessarily, that's not gonna really boost your health because you're already getting a lot of oxygen around your body. So for someone who's say average or moderately active person, sporty person, then it could help push you that, that bit further up the threshold and become more like an elite athlete in terms of carrying oxygen. So meldonium has been shown to have beneficial effects in cardiovascular, neurological and metabolic diseases due to its anti ischemic and cardioprotective properties, which are described mainly in its uh, inhibition and oxidation and its activation of glycolysis. And anti ischemic drugs decrease myocardial oxygen consumption by lowering heart rate, blood pressure, myocardial contractibility or ventricular preload, and or increase myocardial oxygen supply by coronary vasodilation. There are a few studies on the effects of overdoses, but the most common side effects include headaches, nervousness, dizziness, sleeplessness, allergic re uh, symptoms, a fall in blood pressure, and tachycardia. So what does glycolysis mean? Well, basically turning glucose, you know, blood sugar into energy. So this is where something like meldonium isn't appropriate. Say if you're on a cut and you're trying to get lean and not having many carbs, then you're not going to have much glucose in general. So it's going to you're not going to get as much benefit from doing the drug. Someone who's in a cut is going to be using most of energy from lipolysis, turning fat cells into energy. But for athletic performance, glycolysis is the preferred fuel for better athletic performance. So what did I notice being on it? Well, since doing the last cycle of it, I now just do the cross trainer, or some people call it the elliptical, and it was just to protect my knees. But uh, yes, yeah, since doing it, I would typically would average around 285, something like that, so uh, calories in the space of 20 minutes. And this is just using the, the actual calories, not from my whoop itself, but, all, but actually from the machine because that, that is very stable. And just a, more of a comparison in the actual um, the amount of energy burned because that is consistent using it on the same. If you use a totally different brand of machine, yeah, that could vary. But using the same one, it's that's quite a good indication of how much energy you've put through it. You can obviously look at your whoop and compare it there. But that was quite interesting that I went from around 285 to the, the, the indication here. This particular workout, this is towards the end of the cycle and I was 306. So that's yeah a fairly sizable jump in extra energy burn. But also looking at the WHOOP data, this is what interested me was uh, where, where I was at zone four. You can see my typical heart rate, uh, it's gone up to 156 for that one, whereas normally it was like about five lower. Uh, but also uh, yeah, being in zone four, uh, I wouldn't normally be able to cope with being in that heart range for that long. I'm not someone who's that uh, I struggle with pushing myself, well, anaerobically, obviously, but uh, yeah, the top end of aerobically is it's, it's harder for me. And yeah, I was comfortable with that. And then I didn't feel like, um, 
like strained after that at all. I just felt normal back to my normal day doing it in the morning, just completely recovered. So yeah, it does have some benefits definitely for performance. And this is the reason why I only did uh, 500 milligrams a day this cycle rather than the 1000. I figured uh, earlier back in 2023, I wasn't quite as fit. And this is partly why I didn't get such a big boost in HRV and uh, such a de decrease in uh, resting heart rate because I did half the amount. Also, there's other factors at play, like um, I think during, this was later in November I did it, December, and also I was going under, I was had more psychological stress uh, due to like say financial things and uh, my children, my personal things. So the, the mind is a very powerful thing. So uh, yeah, the, the, uh, something like meldonium can only help to a point. So meldonium not only helps with uh, carrying oxygen, but also it's a vasodilator. And say this is why with something like if you, you wouldn't have it with L-carnitine injectable or obviously uh, you know, oral, because what L-carnitine does is it helps switch uh, from glycolysis into lipolysis, turning fat cells into energy. So you'd be working against yourself by doing that. And this is why meldonium is actually good for your arteries, because say if you were to have high amounts of oral L-carnitine, that can actually stiffen up the arteries. There's a protein buildup called TMAO, and that, that stiffens up the arteries. TMAO being a metabolite from the gut, so that's why you don't have to worry about it, say, if you were to take injectable L-carnitine. But then on the flip side, you wouldn't want to be on meldonium too long because it's not a natural state to be in where you're predominantly using uh, uh, glucose as energy. So with the brand I got, you get 40 tablets, and then, it, uh, so I, I did two of them a day, so 500 milligrams. You could do it like I did and do it five days a week, say during, so on your exercise days, you do it in the morning, ideally, because obviously it builds up energy and that's why, but then obviously the, the half-life is actually quite long, so you could do it in the morning and then train in the afternoon or early evening and still get some performance and benefits. But the other way you could do the cycle is just do it 20 days straight, so you're just kind of minimizing having too much oxygen in your body. Because yes, oxygen is great, it uh, gets to all the extremities, it is your fuel, it keeps you alive. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a no-brainer, but then having too much of it is not ideal either. If you were to live in an oxygen tent, that wouldn't be so good for you. So as you do need periods of hypoxia to make your body more efficient, when you're not getting enough oxygen, this is why I do breathing exercises, especially say in a cold shower, and then hold my breath at the end. And carbon dioxide is actually a really potent vasodilator. Other reason is, you know, having a lot of oxygen, you're gonna get more waste products. I mean, it's the fuel going around your body. So uh, this is why I devise, I, I myself, I have 10 portions of fruit and veg today, you know, rich in antioxidants, but also if you could supplement with something like uh, reishi mushrooms, this is probably one of the most dense uh, foods out there with antioxidants. As anything, enhancing mitochondrial function can increase reactive oxygen species. You just need to, you know, you're turning up the dial in your body, which is fine, but you need to be able to counteract it and not, not do it for really extended periods of time. I mentioned about having a decent amount of carbohydrates you know, in your diet when you're on meldonium, and you know, not like, uh, not too much fat either. I myself, I go through periods where I try and restrict protein a little bit, especially animal protein, to try and uh, kind of control that mTOR, that growth pathway. But on the flip side, then that can actually increase your blood sugar level. So it's a kind of delicate balance. Obviously, ideally, you're going to switch protein with more fibrous things, but then it can happen where you're getting still more carbohydrates as a byproduct. So you just have to be aware of that. And so by doing meldonium, it can actually keep your blood sugar down, keep insulin sensitive, which is very much pro longevity. Another thing I noticed with meldonium is my uh, blood oxygen. I monitor it at night with my whoop and that, uh, yeah, it tends to be right at the higher end of it. I t and normally I'm always over 95%, it can be up to 99% oxygen. And a few weeks after doing it, I noticed because the weather is getting bad, I got like a one day cold, not, not even anything really that bad. I was fine working and stuff. But I noticed, yeah, my blood oxygen even went down to 89%. It's never normally that low. So uh, obviously, meldonium only, it, will ha it has a half-life. It it, it's not going to benefit you, say, a month after doing it. So just keep that in mind. So yeah, during the winter, I think you're more likely to get low blood oxygen because just more mucus build up with cold weather, especially in the UK. So what I'm thinking is between cycles doing mouth taping, I mean, you can use these multiple times, and then that will help increase nasal breathing, which is great for increasing uh, 
oxygen around your blood as mouth breathing is just it's just not ideal for that obviously i'm not going to remember to do it every day but just doing it a few days a week even will still have some benefits so will i do meldonium again yeah and I'll, I'll try doing the higher dose next time just seeing how i fare with that so comparing 1000 milligrams versus 500 but in between that i'm just starting a cycle of b-methyls a very similar compound and but it has a longer half-life so you don't have to do it every day so i'm just going to see the differences and just do uh, follow-up content on that if you're looking to get mildronate then check out cosmic nootropic there's a pinned comment down below with their link they're a very well established uh, nootropic seller as well as anti-aging compounds and it's all high quality pharmaceutical grade products they've got on there. They've got great customer feedback. Thanks for watching and see you next time.